Hello everyone, and this is my review for WWE NXT TakeOver The End. And, well, what can, what can you really say? Uh, obviously there's no real interview spots to really talk about. Uh, it's pretty much, ju uh, pretty much just matches, and that was what the whole aspect of the show was, was the matches. And I, I do absolutely love that for the, uh, for, the take uh, for the TakeOver specials. That's what they usually focus on. You don't get a lot of interview time, you don't get a lot of backstage stuff. You just get the matches and they go out there and they perform. And they perform at a very high level and they did it again here tonight. Uh, I have to go off and say, this was a great show, top to bottom. Uh, it was, you know, bottom to top, top to bottom. Everything was fun. I can't really even say anything was really bad in, in any way. Uh, the matches were completely fine. So we'll go off and start with the beginning of the show, which was, and I'm going to butcher the second name, but Ty Dillinger going up against Andrade uh, Sin Almas. Uh, the uh, new guy that was de the new dude that was debuting uh, tonight. He had, he was donning a luchador mask a long a uh, long time ago. Has taken it off for WWE. First of all, during his entrance, uh, anybody like it come to your mind at all? Like he came out dressed almost like the Godfather, outside of not having the vest on. Like he had the top cap with a feather in it and, and everything. Like it instantly screamed Godfather. Uh, right from the get-go, uh, and the match itself was pretty much what you would have uh, what you would have expected from a debut-style match, with the exception of a couple of uh, you know Almas a lot, having Ty Dillinger actually do a couple of good spots in there. The super kick, uh, the super kick off the uh, turnbuckle hand, uh, headstand was a great spot, uh, and just overall not a bad debut match. Match you would expect Almas to go over in this case, which he did. Uh, and it'll be interesting to see where they go with him from uh, here on in. But uh, but like I said, overall, not a bad match to start off the show and to start off all my, uh, all my awesome debuting him in front of the NXT crowd. Up next was the Revival against American Alpha. This is a great tag team match. I, I, I can't say too many, I, I can't really even give anything bad. Like, it's a shocker that they decided to go ahead and give the Revival the tag team titles again. Um, but I can't say anything bad about the match to begin with. So I'm, like, completely okay with the fact that they went there with it. And it does seem like there's going to be another feud for American Alpha because they got attacked afterwards... Uh, by a couple of guys who they didn't really even give a name for yet. I'm sure they will. But uh, so it's like initially you're thinking it's like, okay, who are these guys? And then Paul Ellering comes out and apparently is going to be these guys' manager. And it's like, okay, instantaneously, uh, being from from the aspect of knowing Paul, uh, knowing uh, Paul Ellering and seeing him way, way, way back when, it's like instantaneous, like. Okay, this is going to get interesting. Obviously, these guys are two guys who can uh, get over in the terms of their brute strength and everything in that sense. And Ellering is there for the purpose of doing the mic work. I'm okay with that. Uh, if you, uh, I, I love seeing more managers to, be, uh, to begin with. So, like I said, a little bit shocker that uh, the Revival get the tag team titles back here. Overall, great match. Just top the and top to bottom, love this match. Uh, love how Jordan and Gable worked together. Uh, they had they have one really good spot. Like it's beginning to show even more charisma off of all, both of these guys, especially Jason Jordan here. They have a spot where they do um, a couple of double moves, one leading into a drop, a double drop kick, and then double clothesline out of the ring, and then they slide and pose in the uh, in the ropes right afterwards. I thought that was a really good spot inside of the match, and there was a lot of other really really good spots inside of this one uh, they told the story well in the terms of a tag team match I thought this was a great match just overall and uh, could, uh, just nothing more to say other than that was great to watch uh, which brings up to the next match which was Shinsuke Nakamura versus Austin Aries they didn't do the heel turn tonight I'm okay with that um, interesting to s like I'm I'm interested to note that they had the ribs taped of Austin Aries, and it really didn't come into play at all. So, like they, so that will be interesting to see how that what actually was happening there, why he had his ribs taped. But just overall, this match.
This was an insane match. I like this match. It was really, really well done. Uh, and you could uh, you could definitely feel like like you've been feeling the whole heel turn from Austin Aries here coming up very soon. They didn't go with it here tonight after the match. They just kind of in, ended everything and went on about it. But I can assume we're going to see some kind of heel turn here in the very near future from Austin Aries. Just overall, great match. I... I can't say anything more than that. That was just a joy to watch. And the next one, uh, and the next match being Oscar and Nia Jax. And I said this, I said this about Nia Jax and Bailey. This match was a lot better than I thought it was going to be. Um, uh, you know, Nia Jax is kind of the uh, kind of the person that you you would expect to be in these kind of matches, but she's also very new to the industry, so you would assume that she would have some issues coming coming in, but she's held well and done well selling moves since com- coming in, especially in these two matches, like selling for both Bailey and for uh, and for Asuka in her losses. She is really good at doing that and making it, you know, at least look believable in some way, shape, or form. And this match... Like I said, you, you know, Nia Jax had to display her power. You you saw the guillotine spot where uh, Asuka had her in the guillotine, ch- uh, guillotine choke, and she just lifts her up for a suplex. That was a, a great-looking power spot, and uh, it exudes what you need to do with Nia Jax. She moves in the ring very well. Um, and like I said, the and like I said during the contract sign, she's actually quite good on the microphone too. So uh, Nia Jax is really getting up there and getting up there quickly. Uh, Oscar going over in this one, I'm not shocked there. Uh, like I said, I think they were saving the whole Bailey versus Oscar second match for the Brooklyn show. Um, but I mean, we'll see where they go with that because you never know. Maybe Bailey gets called up here very soon too. So we'll see where they go. Uh, see where they go with that. But like I said, this match, I was a little bit worried that it could have uh, been maybe not so good, but it ended up being a pretty darn good match uh, between both of them. And we'll see where they continue on afterwards with uh, both Nia Jax and Asuka. I would assume Asuka goes. We'll have a thing with Bailey, and honestly, Nia Jax will probably have another quick program with Bailey before the Brooklyn show, before they go right back into Oscar with her as well. So we'll see where they go with everything there. Uh, so this brings me to the main event of the night, which was Finn Balor versus Samoa Joe in the cage match. <clears throat> couple notes about the ca- uh, couple notes about the cage inside the Full Sail Arena. First of all, the way they lower the cage, that was awesome. They had. To- like the whole night, they had the cage like up above the ring, but it was like completely sp- like completely completely sprawled out. So when they lowered it, it kind of closed into the ring, and that was just a, a really cool way of lowering the ring, and pro- probably the best way for them to do it with uh, with the aspect of not having to t- carry the cage out there and everything. Now for Finn Balor's entrance. First of all, he did. Ch- they did change up the coloring scheme on his uh, demon, uh, demon, uh, his demon paint and everything. It was more of a, a black and a white feel. It, it gave a different feel tonight, and it came off really well. I actually liked uh, how the colors came out inside of there. Uh, but his entrance with the cage, uh, you had like at the entrance way the like five like cage semi like things set up, like just like a couple door, what would be like doors or something in that sense uh, set up there, and when he comes through, the, uh, when his entrance and music hit, he's there at the cage like trying to get out, and it was really good, uh, it was just a really good way of him entering, him pushing over the cage to get get um, to start making his entrance, and all the way through there, like he was he was playing around with that cage for the entrance. It was actually really, really fun. Uh, really fun and a spectacle to see in the terms of his uh, in his entrance to begin with. So, on to the actual match itself. The, this cage match, um, the only knock I would have for this cage match, and this is nitpicking, and this is just personal preference. Uh, and it's not even really that bad. Like, because the end of the match ends inside of the ring. Like this feud would say but they they did have a couple times where they they tried toying with the spot about going uh, escaping the cage i wasn't a big fan of that but that's nitpicking right there because this match was a lot of fun 
uh, this match just top to bottom was a lot of fun. The whole, uh, both of them kicking out of the finishers, completely okay with that. This is something that they typically don't do in NXT to begin with, and it's only really done in the main events to be, uh, as well. It's not like every every week they have somebody kicking out of someone else's finisher. It's just one of these things that they use for this. Uh, so both, of, like, Finn kicking out of a muscle buster and... Joe kicking out a coup de gras was not a bad thing here. It actually served well for the match, and they definitely were telling a very, very good, ma- uh, very, very good story in this match. Uh, one that was saying that they, you know, these two had real big personal beef, and like these two were going all out throughout the entire match, and it just came off so. Uh, it came off really well, like the ter- the uh, rope spot where. Finn Balor standing on the ropes and Joe's off uh, down on the ground and Finn just kicks him in the face and then Joe like lands on the rope and that's what causes Finn to fall down was a great looking uh, spot. It's like just continually showed the back and forth and almost like a luck type sequence for Joe in that case. It, it just came off really well. The muscle buster at the end off of the, t- off of the ropes was a great looking spot. And it, was, and it was a proper way to end the match because you had Finn trying to get out over the top of the cage and you have Joe pulling him back in and then pulls him back in and sets him up for the muscle buster on the second rope and just does it. It was a great looking spot and a great way to finish it. Just a great way to finish the match and uh, to see where they're going to go from here on in. Uh, most people are thinking is like, okay, Joe keeps the NXT title. He's staying down in NXT. Finn more than likely going up to the main roster. We'll see if we'll see if that's going to be the actual case of they're going to hold off Finn's main roster debut until a later time. But overall. There's nothing really bad to say about this show. <laughs> there, there really isn't. NXT knocked it out of the water again. Um, I'm hoping Slammiversary does it this weekend as well. They do a good, uh, they've do they done relatively decently, maybe a little bit off the last couple weeks in their storytelling going into it, but I'm hoping the matches themselves are very, very good payoffs uh, in, in the end for that show as well. But this show being an NXT, uh, another TakeOver show that just says... Yeah, we're we're that good. <laughs> NXT is that good with the their takeover specials. They look great. They perform well in the ring. They give you a good like most, if not all, the matches give you some kind of good story throughout the entire uh, entire match. And they're just a fun. Ma- and a lot of times, they're just fun matches to watch to begin with. So that is my review. For NXT TakeOver The End, I thank you guys for watching, and have a great day.